The Puma Abbe Condenser sets Puma apart from other 3D printed microscopes by providing high quality illumination and easy optical Fourier filtration. In this video, I'll explain some updates to its design that make it easier to build and increase its functionality. In the first condenser video, I explained the importance of an Abbe condenser for professional quality microscopy and showed you how to build one. If you want to build a Puma Abbe condenser, please see that video first, because most of the things mentioned there still hold true and will not be repeated here. Thanks to feedback from users and my own experiences, I've identified some features of the original design that would benefit from modification and further explanation. So that's what I'll be discussing in this video. The original receptacle for the lower lens of the condenser used a rigid force-fit recess. With hindsight, this was not the best way to design it, due to the wide tolerances of low-cost 3D printing, and you could see me struggling to get the lens in place in the first video. So, I've redesigned the receptacle for the 30mm lens. As shown here, this now has a moat-like recess and flexure joints to make the receptacle flexible. This allows for slight variations in diameters. The lens easily fits into this without much force, and it is held tight by the spring action of the plastic. This new design also easily accommodates both the original 30mm lens as well as the newer versions which are currently being sold. I'll say more about the different versions of the lenses in the next section. Another change to the design are these two recesses which allow a user to easily pop the 30mm lens out with a stick if they need to clean the inside for any reason or just change the lenses. With the bottom lens removed, the top lens can also be popped out by applying pressure from underneath. The original design had no easy way to remove the lenses short of heating and deforming and so destroying the plastic housing. It has come to my attention that the lenses used in the Abbe Condenser are available in slightly different sizes and shapes from various manufacturers, and some of these have the wrong optical properties to make a good Abbe Condenser. For a start, there are at least three forms of the lower 30mm lens, as shown here. Two of these are parabolic, and one has a shallower spherical dome shape. Also, for one of the lenses, the brim has curved sides, but in the other forms, the brim has squared off straight sides. The new 30mm socket I described earlier will fit all of these. However, this one with the spherical rather than parabolic surface is not suitable for use, because it is too weak a lens with too long a focal length and will not give you proper access to the Fourier plane of the scope or high numerical aperture illumination. So you should avoid using this spherical version of the lens. As for the parabolic lenses, although one has a slightly longer focal length than the other, they both give good results in terms of numerical aperture and access to the Fourier plane, so either may be used. You can see that they both achieve essentially the same numerical aperture of about 0.92 dry and 1.1 oiled. If you want to achieve even higher numerical aperture illumination, you'll need to use the dedicated Puma High Numerical Aperture Illuminator, which I'll describe in another video. I've also learned that there are some variants of the smaller 23mm top lens, in particular that there are some that are 9mm thick instead of the 8mm thick lenses that I use for both the Puma Condenser and Lower Collector. I've been told that the 9mm tall lenses don't fit the enclosure properly, they poke out of the top, and if the enclosure is modified to accommodate them, they don't work well in terms of giving access to the Fourier plane. I don't have any of those taller, thicker lenses to experiment with, so I can't give you focal length differences, but the original 8mm tall lenses have the focal length characteristics shown in the figure, and I recommend you stick to those. As I don't have personal experience with all the variants of these lenses, I thought it useful to give you a short tutorial on how you can check for yourself whether your condenser is correctly configured optically with whatever lenses you use. One of the key benefits of the Puma Abbe condenser is the easy access it gives to the microscope's Fourier plane via the illuminated aperture diaphragm or IAD filter slot, so you can do optical Fourier filtration. In order for this to work, anything in the IAD slot must be at the combined focal plane of the two condenser lenses. To check that this is the case, first insert a filter into the IAD slot. I recommend you use the crosshairs filter that you would normally use for curler alignment. Ensure you insert it the correct way up as shown. 
Now look through the smaller 23mm lens with your eye close to the lens and with your eye relaxed as if you were looking into the far distance. You can alternatively use a camera to peer down this lens with the camera focused at infinity and with fixed focus so the focus doesn't change no matter how close you get to the lens. If the structures of the filter look in good focus, then your condenser is correctly configured. If they're blurred, then it is not, and you may need to use different lenses or customize the housing to alter their positions. Note that because these lenses are not perfect, you will not see everything in perfect focus from the center to the extreme periphery. That's okay, as long as at least part of the field of view is in good focus. Recall from the tutorial on the polarizing condenser that the reason I designed a separate module for polarization is that the molded glass lenses used for the Abbe condenser are anisotropic, so don't allow good extinction of the polarized light. Recall also that the polarizing condenser is a bit of a misnomer because it doesn't actually contain any condensing lenses, so only gives low numerical aperture illumination. To remedy this situation, I developed a new module, the UberPol. The UberPol is a simple ring that is quick and easy to print. Once printed and cleaned up, you cut a disc of linear polarizing plastic and glue it to the UberPol ring, as shown. You should use the thinner polarizing film so it won't cause too much extra height to the top of the condenser when used. To use the UberPol, simply put it over the top of the condenser so it sits between the condenser and the underside of the specimen slide. Use a hook implement, such as a bent paper clip, to rotate the UberPol polarizer. The analyzer is used as usual, with or without a quarter wave plate, as described in the video on the polarizing condenser. See that video for more details about polarization microscopy. Because the UberPol adds a little height to the condenser, you may need to add a thicker or additional condenser flange spacer ring to the condenser to compensate for that, if the UberPol is sticking up too high above the stage but that may not be necessary, especially if you use thin polarizing film. The UberPol thus allows you to do polarizing microscopy with the full Abbe condenser, because the light is first polarized after it passes through the condenser lenses. This allows polarization microscopy with high numerical aperture objectives and with the Fourier filtration abilities afforded by the full Abbe condenser. You can even use it with immersion optics, but I'll discuss that in another video. Note that the UberPol only eliminates the problem of anisotropy, or strain, in the condenser lenses. You can see here how the light from the condenser is fully polarized to a blue background with these filters when there is no objective in the light path. It cannot, however, do anything about strain in the optics above the condenser, such as in the objective lens. Here you can see some escape of white light due to the strain in this lights times 40 objective lens. This amount of strain is not a problem for routine polarization microscopy, such as is used in medical diagnostics. However, for the most stringent research applications of viewing very faint birefringence, you need special strain-free objectives and other modifications to the optics, but I will not discuss those further here. So there you have it, all you need to know about the improved Puma Abbe condenser. All the updated parts are available on the project GitHub page, as is a PDF document detailing the lens parameters described here. Stay tuned to the channel for additional updates, including details of the all-new Puma High Numerical Aperture condenser for immersion optics, and more info about the full curler illumination system. Please remember to like, comment, and share this video to support the Puma Open Source Microscopy project. Thanks for watching.